I walk onto the Golden Gate Bridge walkway. I pace back and forth for nearly 40 minutes crying like a baby. I pick a particular light rail. I lean over that rail. My tears fly to the waters below. And that's when a woman from my left approached me and she had blonde curly hair and those giant sunglasses ladies love to wear that don't fit their faces. And, uh, and she, I, I, I really believed I, in that moment. I thought, this is it. This lady's going to save me. I don't have to die today. And instead, she said, will you take my picture and pulled out a digital camera. When you jumped, you obviously you, you survived, but you smashed your spine, you broke your ankle, you um, went very deep down from a jump so high in the water and, and you came up and, and then you had a, a blessing. There was some, somebody there or something there to help you, uh, which, which I thought was in, incredible to think that, you know, first of all, you think you're being eaten by a shark and before you know it, you've got <laughs> a, a sea lion that's trying to help you. Tell me a bit more about that. Well, you know, that, that fateful day, uh, I would say, was, was one of the worst and one of the best days of my life. Uh, I went to the Golden Gate Bridge. I sat on a bus crying like a child in the very back row in the middle seat, hoping, wishing, and praying that one person would see my pain and say something kind. Hey, kid, are you okay? Is something wrong? Or can I help you? I would have told that person everything and begged him to save me. My dad, to be fair, tried to help me that morning when I couldn't see it. I couldn't see what he was trying to do, and I was not ambivalent. And, 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 I, and I, I, I wholeheartedly believed I had to die. But when I got to the bus, all I wanted to do was live. I just couldn't speak out loud what was going on in my, in my mind. And uh, so I end up, the, you know, the, 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 the bus gets to the Golden Gate Bridge parking lot and a hundred people deboard that bus right there. I'm the last person on the bus, hoping the bus driver will see my pain and, and do something about it. Instead he goes, come on kid, get off the bus, I gotta go. I walk right up to this man, looking right in his eyes. Waterfalls are flowing from mine. He motions to me to get off the bus. I walk onto the Golden Gate Bridge walkway. I pace back and forth for nearly 40 minutes, crying like a baby. I pick a particular light rail. I lean over that rail. My tears fly to the waters below. And that's when a woman from my left approached me. And she had blonde curly hair and those giant sunglasses ladies love to wear that don't fit their faces. And, uh, and she, I, I really believed I, in that moment. I thought, this is it. This lady's going to save me. I don't have to die today. And instead, she said, will you take my picture and pulled out a digital camera? <laughs> I was shocked. But I took her camera, and she posed several times. And, uh, and she said, thank you, and she walked away. And at that moment, I said, absolutely nobody cares, which you and I know are the fur furthest thing from the truth. And I, and I said, and I said in that after that moment, I said to my the, the, the voices in my head, the auditory hallucinations, said, "Jump now at decimals. I will not repeat because they'll pierce your eardrums. Uh, scream, jump now!" And I did, and I would fall 220 feet, 25 stories at 75 miles an hour in four seconds. I hit that water. Upon hitting that water, I'd shattered my T12, L1, L2 lower vertebrae into shards, missing severing my spinal cord by two millimeters. I'd go down 70 feet beneath the water surface, but my, my eyes would open. I was alive and I was drowning. Now, I had no understanding that if I did what I, was, what I did, that I, would, that I might drown. I thought you died an impact, which is the furthest thing from the truth as well. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge jump is mostly fatal, 99% fatal, and it is one of the most violent, violent deaths you can imagine. Um, usually what happens to people is their, their hip bones crush their ribs and crush and, 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 and burst their internal organs. It's a very violent way to die. It's very rare that someone survives intact. Now, I didn't, I didn't actually break my ankle. I only sprained my ankle, if you can imagine. Shattered my three vertebrae, went down 70 feet, opened my eyes, and frantically tried to move to the surface. I broke the surface after almost passing out and drowning. And I bobbed up and down in the water and I just prayed, God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake on repeat. And I really believe he heard me. Uh, and that's when something began circling beneath me, bumping me up. And I thought it was a shark. And I'm freaking out thinking, you've got to be kidding me. I didn't die jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge and a shark is going to eat me.
and I'm punching this thing, but it won't go away. It just circles faster and faster, and no longer am I wading in the water. I'm lying atop it, being kept buoyant by this creature, uh, not knowing what it is. A year later, I would be on a, a television program uh, at, uh, on Primetime Live with John Quinones, uh, and I would be on that show, and I would say, I thought there was a shark beneath me in the water. Well, people, when the show went viral online, wrote into ABC News, from all over the world. And and one man from Las Vegas, Nevada wrote in, his name was Morgan, and he said, Kevin, I'm so very glad you're alive. I was standing less than two feet away from you when you, when you jumped. Until this day watching this show, no one would tell me whether you lived or died. It's haunted me until right now. By the way, Kevin, there was no shark like you mentioned on the show, but there was in fact a sea lion. And the people above looking down believed it to be keeping your body afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind you. Now, I, I look at that as a mirror, and and uh, that was only that was only a piece of the mirror. A woman driving by in a red car who saw me go over the rail at the moment of my attempt called her friend in the United States Coast Guard, who happened to be manning the waters of the Golden Gate Bridge that day. The reason the Coast Guard boat arrived to my position within a three-minute window before I would set in hypothermia and drown was because that woman made that phone call in the timely manner in which she did. When the ambulance got me to the hospital in a neck brace and strapped into a gurney, one of the foremost back surgeons on the West Coast was leaving for the day. He opted to do me a solid and stay. He did my surgery, the first and only of its particular kind. He invented it for my situation, saving me the ability to walk, stand, and run. All of these things came into play to save my life, including the sea lion. What a gift. And uh, like I said before, I am just so grateful for every millisecond I walk this earth, no matter the pain I might be in.